Hello everybody, SK Tackle here. Today we bring you week 4 of the WPL against Tropify, coach of the OKC Thunderous. And we're gonna try to pick up a win so we can go strong to face our next opponent next week, which I'm very excited for. I'll announce it at the end of the video. So here we're gonna review our team real quick and we're gonna get right into the match. First one we have is we got defensive Rotom Wash. Rotom Wash was very good for this matchup because Tropify has very scary moves against my team like Azumarill and Celestilla. And Rotom Wash checked those pretty nicely. Also right on to an extent. And then next month we have is, oh my god, sorry. It's Dragon Dance Latios. It's a pretty cool set I came up with. And by the way, I'm, I'm revealing all my sets here because like we don't play Tropify games, so uh, it doesn't matter unless we meet in playoffs. But yes, we got Latios here with Dragon Dance, Dragon Claw, Sand Headbutt, and Thunderbolt. The only reason Thunderbolt is there is to hit the Azu and the Celestilla, and we are packing the Electrum Z to make that a Giga Ball Havoc. So basically, this thing just did this up and beats his entire team. Um, we gotta weaken the right on a little bit and we definitely need to weaken Celestial a bit but Asu dies after rocks to like a T-Bolt and that actually might be a roll but uh yeah that's, that's uh, Latios for y'all next up we have Arcanine which is a defensive Arcanine this week with Will-O-Wisp, Morning Sun, Flare Blitz and Wild Charge basically this thing is just there to support the team basically support the Latios which uh, you as you can see my entire team is built around for Lattice to win, so that's pretty good. We have Mega Pinsir. I didn't, I was kind of iffy about this one, but like Mega Pinsir is always good. The priority, Flying Staff is always good. He does have a Raikou, he has a Celestilla, he has a Rhydon, which can eat like a close combat or whatnot. But still, Mega Pinsir is always scary, man, and people always have to worry about it, so that's mainly what he's here. Just standard set, uh, not, nothing crazy there. Then we have Mamo Swan here. Focus actually lead Mamo again. Cause this is our best rocker this week. I didn't want to bring her up here because of the Azumarill potential here, Power Rise and Raikou or whatnot. And then um Mamo Swan just rocks, Earthquake, Icicle Crash, Ice Shard just pretty pretty standard. Mm, last but not least we have Magirna uh jumping off the bench this time. I mean it didn't do anything last game sadly, but this time Magirna is working a Sobest set with a Dazzle Gleam, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, and Ball Switch just to keep momentum on our side. As you can see, uh, right on is his uh, ground type, and Rotom and Magirna, which are both switchers, both be there with like Hydro Pump from Rotom and like Ice Beam from Magirna. So, yeah, let's get right into the match. And we're going to lead with uh, Rotom because I felt that was the best lead. He leads Celestial as we go for Thunderbolt. Um, I kind of expect to protect. Oh, and oh, damn it, sorry. We didn't talk about my opponent's team. He brought the Alakazam, which is annoying. Celestila, right on. Gudra, Azumar, Raikou. Actually, I think he brought this team last week against uh, OP Jellicent. But either way, like I don't remember his sets or anything, so it's not like I have an advantage or anything here. So we're just gonna play it off, and that's pretty much what I expected to be against me, anyways. Maybe change the Gudra for something else, but either way, we're gonna bolt switch into our Mama Swan here. And here, obviously, he's not gonna stay in, so who's gonna go for Stealth Rocks? As we go into Rotom, as he misses the lead seed, yeah, that's bad, but like we have bolt switch, so we're not even that worried about it. As he goes into Ride On, we're gonna bolt switch around here, we're gonna Hydro Pump just because. We don't really need to make plays right now because he's so early on the game. And we can, if he brings Gudra, we can just safely ball switch again. Like, there's there's, there's no need to make a, such thing. So, Gudra, it's unfortunately able to speed us, but we're going to hit it with an Ice Beam here. I should go for Dazzling Gleam. It would have been much better, but either way. Now we're going to go into Arcanine, expecting another Fire Blast because there's no way he's using Draco there or anything else. We're gonna go to Willow Wisp expecting him to switch and to potentially right on, which is what he does. So we burn that thing, which is amazing. So we go back into Rotom. 
He gets three rocks here, and I believe we both switch this turn because he's obviously not gonna stay in. As he goes into Raikou, and we both switch out of there. We go into our Mammoth Swan, which Raikou, if it has our sphere, is the only way it can touch it, but it's not even shiny. So that tells me it doesn't have it. So he goes into a, like a Sam here, and this was pretty, pretty weird. I don't understand why you switch like a Sam into a Mammoth Swan. Uh, when you clearly have a hundred percent Celestila there, so I don't know what my opponent was thinking there, but hey, at least I get rid of a huge threat. Even and that just takes uh, like the importance for my gear now, because now my gear now is not as important. Here, if he had a Belly Drum as a, he could have Belly Drum, but Rotom leave an Aqua Jet anyways, and we're faster than Jolly Asu. So, but you know, he goes for knockoff, and that damage shows his Bandit. As we're gonna go for a bow switch into the coming Raikou, go back into the Mammoth Swine, and we just have momentum in our side. He will make a double, cause I expected him to go Celestila, but he stays into Thunder Wave. I don't understand this whatsoever. Um, I could have easily clicked Icy Crash, which killed this, or Earthquake, which killed any other mod that switched it in. I don't know if it was sack enough Raikou, but I don't like like I have a pincer of full health. Like I don't understand his play honestly. He went for turn away against the Mama Swine. So I just don't understand why. But as my gear now gets paralyzed, it doesn't matter too much because like I say, my gear now is there for like a Sam, which is not there no more. So we know for Dazzling him, we'll actually crit him. And then he dies to burn. That crit sucks for him. But I was I'm basically the second of my gear at this point, like I don't really even care. He goes into Gudra here. He connects the fire blast nice for him. Here we go into Latios. And this is where the game it could be over. Cause looking at his team, he has Raikou, Azu, which is like at 70%, I think, and a full health Celestila. So we have a Dragon Dance Latios in here, right? He goes into Raikou. I know he has Shadow Ball. It's so obvious he has Shadow Ball. I can Dragon Dance here because we take like 60 from Shadow Ball and I calked it and after the Shadow Ball damage we are not in range of Asus Aqua Jet meaning we kill this after we did the up we kill Asus with the T-Boat because he has two Aqua Jet we still have enough health toward the point where we can Giga Bolt Havoc the Celestilla and then just if it doesn't kill it then we're gonna kill it off with like Arcana or something but unfortunately he crits the shadow ball and this is so annoying because now now like what it could have been a 5-0 4-0 it's just gonna change so much because now Asu can actually kill us with Aqua Jet so that's so unfortunate but hey that's the game we play incoming Rotom is going for a jet we go for Tornal Bolt and he misses us on the KO so we got a man roll there we got the para, it doesn't really matter because we're just gonna revenge hit with Mama Swan. But now Rotom goes down and then Mama Swan is gonna revenge kill Lazo with Aqua Jet. And now just Celestial against the world. Uh, we're just gonna stay in just to get off damage at this point as he goes for Heavy Slam. I thought he was gonna lead seat to be honest. But no, he just Heavy Slam and we're gonna go into Arcanine. We intimidate it and we basically can win this war. It doesn't matter if he has Earthquake because we are defensive. So after we burn it, and with the fact that we have money on, we beat this 1v1 no matter what. Unless it crits me like 5 turns. Yeah, I crit that even won't kill, wouldn't kill, I think. Maybe it would've, I don't know. Anyways, we have one money on, he leads this. Uh, I wish I could skip these turns. But yeah, basically this is just gonna be a 2-0 win for us. It could've been much better. Could've been a 4-0 the least. Because, like I said, we killed the Raikou, we lived the Aqua Jet from Azumarill, killed that Azumarill, and then it was just Celestilla against five mons. <laughs> so, we could have played around that and get a better differential, but hey, it's Pokemon. It's the game we play. That crit was really annoying, but then again, I crit him on his, uh, on his Rapier. But yeah, in anyways, that's just gonna be game. We thread this here to be the Celestilla. We ended up winning 2-0 with Mamoswine picking 2 kills, Ladios picking 2 kills, 
and I think Arcanine took kills because uh, right on died to the burn. So, so we win 2 0 against Tropify, and we are now 3 and 1, which is awesome. With a plus, what, plus 7 differential, I think. So, yeah, that's good. We're getting up there. And next week, we are facing the OP Jelly Sand. We're facing the Commission of the WPL, which is just amazing. And I am so looking forward to the match. So, yeah, thanks for watching. And stay tuned for next week, which is going to be amazing. Uh, we're going to try to prep the best we can. Because OP Jelly Sand, aka Sohan, he seems like he's a really tough battler. And... We 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 kind of we kind of gotta beat the commissioner, you know. It's it's our mission. So yeah, thanks for watching. This was Eshi Attackio, and I'll see y'all later. Bye bye.